Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Ali Jeter. And I'm Rob Riches. Here's your news now. The first day of spring has finally come. I hope no one missed out on free treats from Rita's Water Ice on County Line in Bryn Mawr earlier this week. The Rita's opened up in late February and is celebrating its 20th year of welcoming spring with free water ice. Speaking of treats, the chilies in Wayne that burned down last year has been granted an appeal by the Radnor Township Zoning Hearing Board earlier this week. According to the Radnor Township Director of Community Development, the main concern was the height of the letters on the sign above the entrance. The building is expected to be slightly smaller than the previous chilies. Plans are to reopen this summer. For those of you searching for new jobs, you should be aware that the usual questions about experience and references are sometimes followed by asking for your Facebook username and password. Prospective employers are more likely to ask job candidates considering public agencies such as law enforcement positions. Companies and government agencies are going beyond just looking at your profile because most profiles are set to private. Questions have been raised about the legality of the practice. Most people in search of, of a job cannot afford to say no, and they're cleaning up their pages. That was your trip around the block. Now let's go across the nation with Rob. As we are pulling out our shorts and t-shirts, Arizona is gearing up for snow. Officials closed about 200 miles of Interstate 40 across Arizona earlier this week due to a winter storm which dumped over a foot of snow on the region. The wacky weather was consistent this week across the nation, as Nebraska reported two tornadoes that touched down, injuring three people and tossing 31 rail cars from their tracks. There have been over a thousand high and low temperature records set or broken across the United States so far this year. As for Florida, things weren't looking so sunny as protesters stood outside the Seminole County Courthouse earlier this week. The death of an unarmed Florida teen has protesters, neighbors, and family members upset because the man who shot the teen remains free. George Zimmerman was part of a neighborhood watch group. He told police he shot the teen in self-defense. According to police, he has not been charged because there are no grounds to disprove his story of what happened. The investigation continues. Native lumber company owner Janice Sergru has reported the find of more than a dozen dead coyotes that were dumped on her property in Belchertown, Massachusetts. Sergru told 22 News she is disturbed and concerned about the cause of the mass killing. State Division of Wildlife Ralph Taylor said the dumping of the animals is illegal and that coyote hunting season ended at the beginning of March. It is now up to police to conclude how the coyotes died. Now here's Allie for your trip around the world. American so Soldier Sergeant Robert Bales, who's accused of killing 16 Afghan civilians, claims he does not remember what happened and remains in shock. Allegations of whether he was drunk have been denied. According to his attorney, Bales suffered a traumatic brain injury during a roadside bomb explosion and lost part of his foot in another tour in Iraq. Bales also faces many financial pressures as his home was recently foreclosed. Afghans still demand Bales be returned to face trial in Iraq, as for now he remains in U.S. custody in Kansas. The spiritual leader of the Middle East's largest Christian community, Pope Shenouda III, died earlier this week, and his funeral was held in the Egyptian capital at St. Mark's Cathedral. The church was packed with thousands of mourners paying their respects to the 88-year-old Coptic Christian Pope. Others who were unable to enter the cathedral watched the service on a huge television screen outside. BBC News reported that women were wailing and fainting as the coffin was carried out and police struggled to control the mourners. There is no schedule yet for finding a successor. For the first time in history, France is on scarlet alert for terrorist attacks after the gunman who killed seven people in the three shootings is predicted to strike again. The prosecutor leading the investigation, Francois Mollins, said at a news conference that all the victims, including three soldiers, a teacher, and three children, were all shot in the head at point-blank range. Mollins said the gunman knew he was being tracked and is likely to act again. Funerals were held for the murdered soldiers earlier this week. French presidential candidates have been suspended campaigning for now. And that was your trip around the world. When you meet someone new, it can be difficult to figure out how to talk to them. Luckily, it doesn't have to be. 
let's go to Jimmy with a demonstration of the Evernote Hello iPhone app. Have you ever struggled to break the ice with someone? Well, now there's a 21st century solution to this age-old problem. Called Evernote Hello, this iPhone app makes it easier to connect with people you may meet in your everyday life, enabling you to better remember them in the future. To keep track of a new acquaintance, you can share your smartphone by passing it to them and have them enter their information, or you can input the information yourself. Additionally, you can import their details if you happen to have them in your contacts already. After you log in or create a free Evernote account, you are asked to enter your name, Twitter handle, email address, cell phone number, and a photograph of yourself. Remember to only include what you want to freely share with people you meet. You can also choose a custom greeting and a thank you message. When you meet someone new, go ahead and swap phones. When prompted, Mark entered his full name and photograph. He chose not to enter his Twitter handle, email address, or phone number. Besides gaining a new contact and a potential friend, the exact time and date are added to the encounter, along with where you met them and any additional notes of photos you or they choose to add. Evernote Hello is available as a free download in the iTunes App Store. For location, I'm Jimmy Kroll. I am loving Jimmy's practical tech connection advice. Mary-Kate, we cannot wait to hear about the success and heartbreaking end to our Cabrini men's basketball season. The Cabrini College men's basketball team put up a tough fight to make it to the NCAA Division III championship game. Cabrini season ends with a 63-60 loss to Wisconsin Whitewater. The Cats finished their season keeping a winning streak at their home court, being undefeated in the conference, and with a record of 31-2 in the year 2011-2012. Let's just say the Cabrini College men's basketball team is going out for revenge next year's season. The Cabrini College men's lacrosse team continues to move up in the latest poll. They have re recently defeated Gettysburg College for the first time in school history. Junior student athlete Bobby Thorpe was named CSAC Player of the Week, posting three goals and two assists against Gettysburg. The Cavaliers' winning record remains at 5-2 overall. As for sports, March Madness is coming to an end, and teams are competing in the Sweet 16. And I'm guessing most of you have thrown out your brackets? But who knows, Kentucky might actually take it all the way. This has just been another valuable sports update. Be sure to tune in next week. We are really proud of our Cabrini Cavs. Here's Felicia with this week's entertainment update. Hey guys, it's Felicia here with your entertainment news. All you hungry Hunger Games fans, get ready. The Hunger Game movie premieres this Friday, March 28th. Critics are already giving the film positive reviews, calling the film the most loyal adaptation of a book ever. Also, you Twilight fans, a 15-second trailer of Breaking Dawn Part 2 has hit the internet. But if you are craving more action from the final Twilight film, make sure you have a front row seat for the Hunger Games premiere, because the full trailer will premiere during the film. Also, don't forget to purchase your ticket to the Moda Val Vivo Fashion Show this Saturday at 8 p.m. in Grace Hall. Tickets are $3 for Cabrini students and $5 for guests. This week, Holly had the chance to review the Fray's new album. Let's hear what she had to say about it. This is Holly Prendergast for Entertainment, here to report on Album of the Week. On February 7th, the Fray released their third studio album, Scars and Stories. One of my favorite songs on the album is the bonus track on the deluxe, deluxe version of the CD, which is a cover of Bruce Springsteen's Streets of Philadelphia. While it may not ultimately compare to Bruce's version, it's so good and I think everyone will love it. Their single on the album, Heartbeat, is really upbeat and catchy, and it's a song that everyone will love. Overall, the album is really good, and it does compare to their first one, which is still my personal favorite, and I think that any Frey fans would love the album. Be sure to tune in to 89.1 WYBF-FM Cavalier Radio to hear all the latest music from the Frey and more. Well, that's all I have for your entertainment news. I'm Felicia Melvin, back to the news desk. Thanks for staying tuned in with us this week. I'm Ali Jeter for Location Weekly News. And I'm Rob Riches. Have a great week, Cabrini.